such a pleasure to be here today amongst all of you change makers at Change Now and in such an inspirational area of Paris. Like, wow, I can't imagine a better place to be talking to change makers around the world. I have the distinct pleasure at Microsoft of leading a team, as Krista mentioned, that focuses on using technology to benefit society. And today, I want to talk a little bit about the work that we do to use technology to benefit the environment. It's no secret to anyone here, you just have to open the paper every single day, that we are facing immense environmental challenges. We're facing climate change at an unprecedented rate. We're trying to ensure resilient water supplies for the planet and how we are going to feed a growing population that will reach 10 billion, all at the same time while we're facing an ongoing and catastrophic loss of biodiversity. I think I'm, okay. Sorry about that. Um, Guys, the slides are like, no, okay. I think we're back. Sorry about that, uh, AI in action, people. Um, so it's my AI in the back there that's helping me out with this. Um, what we know is that time is way too short and resources are way too thin. When we look around the room and see all of the people, all of the change makers here that are working to solve environmental challenges, we know in order to make a real difference in the planet, we, need, we would need multiple times more of you or we need something to really accelerate our efforts. We need something to help us break through. And we think AI can be that kind of a game changer. So I wanted to quickly tell you about, I was in Africa last week um, and I got the opportunity to uh, go to Old Petcha Conservancy in Kenya. Um, and I got to hear about how they uh, are protecting rhinos from poaching. Uh, in fact, on the last slide, you saw that great uh, northern white rhino. That was the last living male white rhino on the planet. And in Olpecha today, they still have two females that are living, uh, but they can't have children. And so they're working on a way of taking uh, some frozen eggs and sperm and, and mating them and trying to con uh, conserve the species. But more important than that, they're trying to ensure that they ensure the ongoing existence of rhinos. And when you look at the park here, what you see is a 125 kilometer border around Old Petcha Conservancy. And in order to be able to protect that border with the limited number of rangers they have, it's almost impossible. Uh, so they need a solution. They need a solution that doesn't require 10xing their workforce because they simply don't have the funds for that. So they need technology that can monitor, model, and help them manage their borders. And that's what AI can do. AI can be a game changer for conservation efforts in places like Old Petcha. But that's not the only, these slides. <laughs> so that's what inspired us uh, in 2018 to launch a program called AI for Earth. So what AI for Earth does is it puts artificial intelligence tools in the hands of people working to save the environment uh, at, to accelerate their efforts. It helps places like Old Petcha monitor their borders, uh, predict where poaching could potentially be, um, understand when there's something wrong and when they need to take action. Um, that's why we put, we launched here in Paris two years ago a $50 million five-year commitment to do just that with multiple people working in conservation efforts. And what I think about that, the important thing, yeah, it's $50 million, that's some real money, but it's five years, it's a five-year commitment. When you work in the technology industry, that's a geological age. Uh, it's something we're incredibly committed to. And we can see already the impacts of this. While I was in Kenya last week, I also had the opportunity to work with one of our grantees in AI for Earth um, called WildMe. And what WildMe does is it takes and indexes photos uh, from animals to help with conservation efforts. And I got to spend some time with a woman named Tanya. Tanya is a leading scientist, Tanya Berger-Wolf. And here is what she's working on. 
Please roll the video. In every corner of the world, researchers and organizations face unprecedented challenges. To develop solutions that address climate change and a catastrophic loss of biodiversity while sustainably feeding a growing population and protecting water supplies. Developing sustainable solutions to these challenges requires the rapid collection and analysis of diverse data sets. This is a daunting task for small organizations, preventing them from scaling their solutions and amplifying their impact. To bridge this gap, Microsoft is empowering people and organizations with AI and cloud tools to solve global environmental challenges. Through AI for Earth, individuals and organizations are now using AI to collect, process, and analyze data at a scale and speed previously unimaginable, growing more food while protecting our natural resources for future generations, turning information into insight to prevent and even predict environmental threats and developing algorithms that enable smarter, tailored conservation solutions down to the individual animal. Microsoft is committed to accelerating innovative solutions and creating a more sustainable future with new open source apps that anyone can use, partnerships to accelerate progress, and grants to empower organizations around the world so everyone can harness AI and together create a better future. So if you saw the part with the zebras, that's where I was out working with Tanya to track those zebras, the gravy zebra that's endangered, to enable them to understand what intervention policies are working to help preserve that species. Um, there's a great video online about this that I thought was going to play today, um, but you can go check it out and see exactly what wild meat is doing in order to conserve species. But actually, if you look at this, um, this map we have up now, this isn't just a local problem, this isn't just a Kenyan problem, this isn't just a US problem, it's not just a France problem, it's a problem around the world and that's why in AI for Earth we are working with grantees on all continents and our goal is to have a grantee at least in every single country. We've got a, quite a few grantees here in France because there are just so many innovative people in this area. I've met with a bunch of them. Um, today we had a great uh, grantee called uh, Surfrider uh, over in the hall, and uh, they, they um, basically identify waste in riverbanks and help us understand what rivers are polluted and where do we need to take interventions to help preserve uh, rivers and to help stop plastic from going into the oceans. I have a special treat for you. I have one of our AI for Earth grantees named Nick Wise, uh, who's here from Ocean Mind, and he is gonna tell you about the work that he is doing to help with fisheries. Nick, let's roll the video. It's amazing how much humans take from the sea. Costa Rica is 92% oceans. We want it to be sustainable. Illegal fisheries is a great threat. It's having an impact in our oceans and in our economy and in our environment. There are many issues with sourcing sustainable seafood. We are trying to push for that accountability on the water. Using Microsoft AI, we empower governments, suppliers, and NGOs at scale around the world to prevent illegal fishing in a way that just wasn't possible before. At Ocean Mind, we receive billions of data points, satellite images, optical imagery, radar imagery, infrared data. We use Microsoft AI to recognize different types of fishing activity, the identity of the vessel, and whether that vessel had a license. We find the suspicious activities so that our analysts can look and investigate it, and governments can enforce more effectively. Now we have data, we can identify vessels, we can identify patterns of illegal fishery and support the Coast Guard. The ability to have third party verification is crucial in protecting us and our brand as we sell seafood throughout the world. We are making our first API available through Microsoft AI for Earth to anyone who wants to help fight illegal fishing. The time for taking care of the ocean is now. We have the capabilities to change the needle on the sustainability of fishing. I am convinced that we will make a difference.
Thank you, Shelley, for that introduction. So, Ocean Mind is working with Microsoft in order to um, bring together a wide variety of data sources in order to provide strengthened governance on the oceans. The reason that we're working with Microsoft is because, according to the United Nations, around 30% of all fisheries that we um, measure from are overfished and potentially unsustainable. And another 60% are at the maximum level of sustainability. And so we're in a situation where, with 3 billion people in the world relying on seafood for their primary protein source, and around 12% of the world's population relying on the seafood industry for their livelihoods, that we're approaching a potential crisis. So Ocean Mind is now pulling together a wide variety of data sources in order to help us understand illegal fishing and to try and prevent overfishing. And another problem that's associated with illegal fishing is that of human trafficking and modern slavery. And we're starting to understand these patterns of behaviors as well using data. This is an illustration of the sorts of vessel tracking data that you can gather. There's hundreds of thousands of vessels producing billions of data points every day. And we analyze these using AI in order to detect phishing activities. It's only possible to analyze this information at scale by using cloud computing and AI capabilities such as those provided by Microsoft. When you can't track vessels, then we can start to turn to other data sources. This is an image of radar data taken from a satellite. The satellite goes around the planet, beams radar down to the Earth, and collects the results. And you can clearly see the little white dots in the north of vessels waiting to go into a port in Asia. You can also use satellite imagery to take pictures. And this is an image from the European Space Agency, a free image that anyone can access and, and start to understand what they see there. We can see the vessels clearly moving in and out of port, but there's so much more you can see as well. And you can also see lights from space, from vessels such as um, fishing vessels that have lights that attract fish to the surface. You can pick all of that data up from space and bring it into the cloud in order to analyze it. But the challenge, of course, is that there's so much data that it's impossible for humans to look at it. And that's why AI is absolutely essential in the analytics of this data. And with Microsoft's support, you can now bring this data into one place. You can build AI models. You can start to understand what it's telling you, whether it's fish or ocean health, or whether it's counting trees or understanding carbon emissions. This is all now possible from data sources, from places like the European Space Agency and other parts of the space industry. And you can access this data, and you can process it with just a laptop using cloud facilities. So there's no problem now. We can start to look at this data and we can start to uh, understand. You can actually now go out and do something. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you very much. What a great grantee we have in Nick. This has just been so fun. Now I want to turn a little bit to probably the most important or the most existential challenge we're facing today. That's climate change. It requires big, bold action by everyone. And that's why Microsoft has made big commitments in terms of helping stem climate change. We've been carbon neutral since 2012. Um, we are one of the first companies that implemented a carbon tax on our operations to help fund becoming carbon neutral. But what we know is that given the challenge facing us, neutral is not enough. And those that can go faster and can afford to go faster need to do more. And that's why we announced just two weeks ago that Microsoft isn't going to be just carbon neutral we're going to be carbon negative 
across all three scopes of emissions by 2030. That means all of our direct emissions in scope one, all of our electrical emissions that are primarily data center emissions from a company like Microsoft that's a cloud provider, but also our supply chain, the folks that uh, make Xboxes and Surface laptops. We'll be removing more carbon from the atmosphere than we're emitting by 2030. We didn't stop there though. That was already an ambitious goal. We just announced two weeks ago that by 2050, we will remove all of our historical direct and electrical emissions since our founding as a company in 1975. It's a big commitment. It's also backed up by a plan because we know we can make commitments, but we have to understand how we're gonna get there or we at least have to have a path. And so the first thing we'll be doing is starting off by moving to 100% renewable energy by 2025. That means across all of our data centers, across all of our operations. We'll also start reducing our emissions so that by 2030, we have reduced our emissions by 50% and we're shifting our portfolio uh, to removal instead of avoidance offsets for the remaining. And by 2030, we'll be negative and we'll start chipping away at those historical emissions that will be removed from the atmosphere by 2050. Now, we have a plan, but it's also a moonshot. And so we have to invest in technology and opportunities to help cut emissions uh, and to help figure out how we're gonna remove carbon from the atmosphere because today there is no real direct air capture technology. That's why we announced a billion dollar fund to help fund some of these technologies. But that's not it because if Microsoft moves to becoming carbon negative and removes all of our historical emissions from the atmosphere and we invest in technology, the real opportunity to help solve the challenge we have in front of us is for everybody to work together. And that's why we want to work with customers, partners, everyone around the world uh, to empower them to use technology to help cut emissions and help remove emissions from the atmosphere. Um, we also, I think as people who work in this area understand, it's a really murky area to figure out. We need more transparency. We need to understand how carbon is calculated. Uh, we need, you know, we don't need people to need PhDs in carbon math to understand what they need to do. So we'll be pushing uh, for more transparency and more clarity in those areas. Uh, we'll also be using our voice to advocate for policies uh, at all around the world that help reach those goals for the planet. Uh, and finally, any of you who work in a big company know how energetic employees are around climate change. Uh, and so for us, we have 120,000 employees around the world and helping engage our employees and unleashing their creativity and their efforts and their labor when they want to go volunteer for a project uh, to help halt climate change is one of the key pillars of the announcement that we made just two weeks ago. We can't do any of this without everyone in the room. And particularly what I've seen in the Grand Palais today and yesterday is so much French innovation in this area. So thank you very much for everything that you're doing. I was over here and saw um, carbon removal technology. I saw new AI being used to track rivers. I saw AI being used to help farmers produce milk more efficiently. Uh, so much French innovation in this hall and across this country. We're excited to work with people here to help tackle these tough challenges and people around the world. Thank you very much.